oh man, I don't like the looks of this. Fortunately, I'm prepared, but there's something I want to do. I want to put a poly edge on this blade and I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so what's the goal here? Uh, the goal is to have kind of a soft edge on the underside of this blade that doesn't catch the concrete or bounce off the concrete real hard and also uh, cleans the snow away nicely. So what I've done is I've set the blade about a quarter inch just above the ground here. And what I want to do is sandwich the piece of poly between the moldboard and the cutting edge here. And I want it a little bit longer so that it kind of acts as a cushion. Uh, I don't want it right down at the same edge as this blade. That doesn't really accomplish anything. I'm hopeful I can make the edge a little longer. So it's, it's going to wear however it wants. It'll wear against the ground. So hopefully I can give it just enough length that it kind of protects this edge, that it cleans pretty well on the ground, and that it doesn't fold under the, the moldboard and break off. So I'm going to get started on that. Okay, so I got the blade off the tractor and I got a sheet of poly here. Now what this actually is, is high density polyethylene. And uh, you can get these at, guess where, local big box store. And I've had this sheet kicking around for a while. The issue I've got is that it's narrower than the blade. So I can't make just one piece that goes all the way across. That would be pretty nice. Um, but instead, what I'm going to do is actually make three sections. I'm going to have a wider section in the middle, and then I'll have shorter sections on the ends. So I've got two bolts here, so I'll make that one section. Three bolts in the middle, I'll make that a section, and then two bolts down there, and that'll be a section. Because the thing is, these, these outer edges, they're probably going to wear faster than the center, and that might make it easier to change out uh, pieces if I need to. So, uh, I guess with that, I'll get started. What I'll do is I'm going to lay this, I'm going to take this off, take this edge off. I'm going to lay it on here, trace it, make a pattern, and then make it about a quarter inch wider. Then I will put the bolt holes in it, mark the bolt holes, and set it in there and just, just see how it goes. It's, it's not hard. I've done this before. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. And... Uh, I learned a few things last time, so hopefully, hopefully I can get it right this time. All right, half inch socket. Okay, I got the cutting edge off and I want a separation between all my new poly edges right at the, right at the ends of the, of the uh, edge. So I wanted two bolt holes and then the three would be a different, another section. So I want to get right between these two bolt holes. And luckily, luckily they're about seven inches apart. So I'm going to take my old Sharpie and mark it at about three and a half inches. And that's just so when I lay my sheet out, I know where to make my cuts. I could do that on the other side too here. Then another thing I noticed is I got this yardstick here and it's about exactly a quarter inch wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this right on the edge of the poly. Stick that yardstick on there and then make my mark on the poly with that. And then I'll have a piece that's exactly a quarter inch wider than this. All right, got my edge lined up. These edges lined up together, flush. Then I'm going to add my quarter inch spacer. Go ahead and make a mark. <laughs> Couldn't make it around my thumb there. So I've got enough material right here to cover each end bit, or what I'll refer to as the end bits. So it's a little bit longer, but I might, you know what, I might just cut this out, split it right in the middle, and then I'll uh, fit it on and just cut off the ends as needed. This stuff cuts real easy. This piece is 24 inches wide. I'm going to go ahead and mark the center. And then I'll just cut it down the center. Twenty-four, twelve. Doesn't have to be perfect. Even though this is black, a red Sharpie shows up fairly well. 
to cut it. I'm going to try these good old tin snips. All right, got my end pieces cut. Uh, I've got the manufactured edge on the inside here. That way when I have my centerpiece in there, it should hopefully make a nice tight gap, <laughs> depending on how well I cut the centerpiece. I got my marks here, so what I'm gonna do is try to line that up the best I can. And this is the actual blade cutting edge here. Remember, I wanna be longer than that. So I'm gonna make this flush right here. And it looks pretty good, so I'm just gonna mark my holes. And then the excess will be cut off here. And I will chamfer it just like, just like on this blade. All right, I'm gonna make my centerpiece now using the same method. And I've got my marks here and here, and as long as my material's wider than those marks, I should be in good shape. And it is. I only have to cut off about a half inch right here, so it's working out pretty well. All right, so I've got manufactured edges here, 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 and here. So I'm gonna lay it in my, in my centerpiece so I know how to, know where to cut it. All right, let's see how it fits together. It's really not bad, I think this will work. So what I'm going to do is I'll put the center one in first, punch those holes, and then I will put the end bits in, punch those holes, and bolt it all together. Okay, I got my center piece in place. I marked the holes the best I could with a center punch. I used this straight edge here to get the manufactured edge of my poly uh, lined up with the, the manufactured edge of the uh, cutting edge. So I used, what is this, 11 30 seconds drill bit kind of used it as a transfer punch. So it looks pretty good. I'm gonna punch these out with a drill and then I'm gonna stick it on the blade and see what happens. Looks like this one walked a little bit. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, now let me get one of these end bits on. Got to get the edge of this. <clears throat> I got to get the edge of this flush with the edge of this. Looks pretty good. There's a good, good tight gap right there. I think I'll clamp it. Next, I'll just drill these holes out. And I can see my original marks through here, so I had it lined up pretty good. Helps if you got a sharp drill bit. I don't have any of those. All right, now I'll get the other side done the same way. Well, it looks pretty good. I got a pretty consistent edge here. I got pretty tight gaps. This one isn't quite as tight. 
because I think I had the cut edge on that one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and zip it down. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I've got to trim these off. I was pretty fortunate these carriage bolts were long enough. I did this before on a 165 that I had a blade for, and the bolts that came on the blade were too short when I sandwiched everything together. I had to go out and get new bolts. Not a big deal, but it's kind of nice to not have to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut it flush with the edge of the blade. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it shouldn't be sticking way out. Oh, there's the blade. <laughs> I'm gonna champ for that too. Might need a little more as I get into it, but we'll see. All right, this turned out pretty nice. All the way down here, I got it chamfered and everything. Uh, one thing I forgot about was these feet here. I may have to adjust those when this goes back on. And uh, these, these skids here should, I think should just touch up against uh, the ground. Um, the, the X300 has a spring assist in it and it actually lets the blade float a little bit and it works really well. I don't want all the weight of the blade on these. They'll just, they'll just wear out really fast. You know, same with the edges. So you have to do a bit of adjusting here and there to get it where you want it. All right, I think we got it here. I've got the blade just touching up against the ground, and then I got this, this foot or this skid adjusted downward, so it's just touching. It's not really a lot of weight on it. Now, I did have to bring it down a little bit. I had it too high. There are half hole adjustments here. Um, there are multiple holes in this, in this skid, and then there's two holes up here on the blade that you can choose from, so you've got to get it set where you want it and then try to find the next closest hole. So overall, I'd say it turned out pretty well. Um, anxious to use it, see how it works out. Uh, but then again, part of me hopes there's no snow. So by doing this, hopefully I will ensure a mild winter. Hey, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching.